Prograde is an app that has taken the world by storm. Today, we delve deep into its two versions, Procreate and Procreate Pocket, and we compare them. Let's jump right into it. In this section, we usually present the two softwares separately, but since Procreate and Procreate Pocket are essentially one and the same, with very slight differences, it is best to have an overview for both of them in one go. So, what are these two apps all about? Or rather, app? Well, put simply, Procreate Pocket is kind of like Procreate's child. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here. First things first, Procreate Senior. Procreate is a raster graphics editor, meaning an illustration app rather than a graphic design app. It's developed by Savage Interactive and, as previously mentioned, the app is mainly for drawing and painting. Recent updates to the app added simple animation features and 3D model painting. Procreate is also available on iPad and costs $12.99 US dollars for a one-time purchase. The app was created in 2011 and slowly rose to popularity in the mid-2010s. In 2014, Savage Interactive created Procreate Pocket, which is the iPhone version of Procreate. It costs $4.99 US dollars. Although Pocket is a variation of the original, it has to be bought separately. It mainly has everything the original has, with the exception of 3D model painting. Those two elements are the main differences between the two apps, the platform and the availability of 3D features. Now let's explore how each app presents itself. Procreate is simple and functional in its presentation. We have one bar at the top. Being the only toolbar, naturally it has everything you need. The different tools are organized into categories represented by different icons. When clicked, the icon triggers a vertical panel with all the tools it hosts. In addition, we have the word gallery that once tapped will take you back to the main screen of the app, which has all your drawings, hence the name gallery. The previously mentioned icons are a wrench, a magic wand, a cursor, and a brush, to name a few. The tools they host vary from effects, canvas options, and transformation tools, and the symbol of each icon reflects the tools it has. For instance, the magic wand icon is where the visual effects are all at. When clicked, the panels trigger and hide seamlessly and smoothly, making for a sophisticated and nice looking interface. On the left, we have a mini bar, which is where you can change your brush's size and opacity. Between the sliders is a square that prompts the color picker, and just beneath the sliders we have undo and redo buttons. And lastly, this space in the center is for the canvas, which is wide and comfortable to work with. Generally speaking, Procreate and Pocket are identical in concept and presentation. Pocket just adapts its interface to a smaller screen, which unsurprisingly doesn't introduce many changes. It just means Procreate but cramped. Very cramped. The toolbar remains at the top with only 5 icons at the top showing, whereas the iPad version has all 9 icons showing. The rest of the icons are hidden behind the word modify, which once tapped on prompts a bar underneath the first one. When an icon is tapped on, the panels show at the bottom and can be lifted all the way up to the top of the screen for a more clear vision of what's in the panel. The brush sliders are no longer on a bar. They are now two circles that can be tapped and swiped to perform the same actions previously mentioned. Or you can find them under the wrench icon in the preferences tab. In addition, some panels do take the entire screen when prompted, like the color panel for instance. Now you know what we mean by procreate but cramped. Procreate is most popular for its brushes and for good reason. These brushes are versatile, customizable, downloadable, and exportable. What this means is that the possibilities are endless and your limit is the sky with Procreate's brushes. We have seen the great effect of this in the many available brushes from other creators that can make wonderful paintings, drawings, calligraphy, and lettering. Other than brushes, Procreate also offers many other tools such as different color interface options, text tool, grids, effects, shapes, transformation options, selection layers, and so on and so forth. Since Procreate's interface focuses on minimalism, it falls into the trap of having many tools under several icons, tabs, and what have you. Thus, navigating these tools can be bothersome. 
as you'll be pulling panels and sifting through tabs often to get where you want to go. Fortunately, Procreate remedies that with gestures, which are quick actions that you can perform using your fingers without having to go to the toolbar. Some of these are two finger tabs to undo and three to redo. On the newer versions of the Apple Pencil 2nd Gen to be specific, these gestures can also be used on the stylus itself, making the workflow on Procreate as satisfying as spreading butter on bread. Is that a saying or am I just hungry? Pocket has everything that Procreate has in terms of tools and workflow except for 3D model painting. And no stylus, gestures as iPhones only work with a basic silicon head stylus instead of the usually more advanced sharp plastic tip ones like the Apple Pencil. While the tools and features are mostly the same, it's the workflow that differs. Procreate Pocket is very cramped, it can feel very narrow and suffocating to work on, especially if you're used to working on a big surface. A small surface to draw on is notoriously bad for your hand, and if you use it for a long time, can cause carpal tunnel and other hand injuries, which trust me, you don't want to have that. Sure, gestures can really help minimize the cramped nature of the app, but it still does not cut it. For this reason, Procreate Pocket should be an app that you use for a quick sketch or a doodle, something more on the fun side of things. We have said it time and time again on this channel, Procreate is super easy to use with a great sophisticated interface, a very helpful and organized documentation, and a big community on a plethora of social media platforms to help you whenever you need. All in all, the app has a minimal learning curve and can be a joy to get to know and learn about. While Pocket is very similar to its senior in nature, the crampiness of the app can turn a lot of people off. The lack of space coupled with big panels that blend your view of the interface can make you overwhelmed and confused, especially if you come from a professional-grade digital art software. However, if you are an avid phone drawing app user, Procreate can feel like a major upgrade, especially if you also come from using Procreate on the iPad. Not only will it be familiar to you, but also would seem like a much better option than other apps. In addition to that, the documentation of the app is a perfect starting point and has everything explained and organized beautifully. Not to mention the booming community for the app, which offers tutorials as well as time-lapse videos of artwork, both teaching you and inspiring you to get creative. Pocket is a really good and well-equipped app for 2D art and animation. You just have to consider whether or not you can withstand the crampiness. As tradition would have it, no winner can be chosen as these apps are for different platforms, for different purposes, and ultimately for different people. Think about it, some people are professionals used to Photoshop and want something that can keep up with their iPads when they're on the go. Procreate is easily the right choice. Others are more into art for fun and as a hobby and want something cheap for their phones. They don't necessarily want to invest in an iPad and an Apple Pencil, so they go for Pocket, naturally. So think about which of these two categories you fit in and go from there. And that was that for our video today. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Make sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments below. With that said, we hope to see you in our next video.